Let me ask you, my friend, is it possible that there'll be a lot of women say their husband's making a ton of money, they live in the suburbs, they've always voted Republican. Come election day, Hillary Clinton is a credible candidate for president. She may be a bit to the left of some of these Republican women. They're going to sneak out and vote for her. Sure. In fact, right now in the polls, the without telling hubby. The, absolutely. But the reason she's doing well now is because she is getting white women. And that's unusual for a Democratic candidate. So you have mm -hmm. to figure that that's already going on. Hmm. That was a clip taken from Hardball with Chris Matthews hosting where he was discussing presidential candidates, as you heard, Hillary Clinton and Carly Fiorina before he let that sentence slip. I think that's a great place to bring in a roundtable, don't you? It is. Of course, that's what you expect from Chris Matthews. Please yeah. welcome to our round table we just have one guest today but he is a guest that can possibly very important the, guest the role of two guests ellis hennigan tv commentator <laughs> and a good friend to uh, newsmax ellis it's great uh, to have you with us th th does that mean i'm schizophrenic that i'm confused w w where does this land that I means you have a big personality that is that's exactly i, I I'm see concur. and we, ex and we anyway. expect you to uh, give a it's good to a throaty defense of uh, Carly Fiorina. Just is, kidding. I know it is, <laughs> it is good to see. It is good to see you guys. Can I? Can I just say one thing before we start? Hubby. Chris Matthews should not say hubby. That word is out. No more it's hubbies. Out? Okay. okay. What, what is? The, what Note is the proper term? You can't say hubby anymore. What do you say, Alice? <laughs> That's something my grandparents would have said. I think you can say spouse. Sp spouse. Oh, okay. Partner. Or other half. Partner. Can you say that? <laughs> well, I think uh, since yes, we're talking, since nowadays, since we were talking specifically about white women that Cokie Roberts was pointing out for Hillary Clinton, I think we have to be specific. Can't just say partner these days anymore. But let's move That's on. Right. Let's talk about Carly Fiorina a little bit. I wanted to bring her up, Alice, because yep. uh, in Iowa recently, there were long lines of folks waiting to hear what she has to say. She's certainly bringing something different to the table, her business background. Uh, over on the GOP side, I know you tend to lean the other way here, but do you think Hillary Clinton, again, should be concerned about some momentum possibly building behind Carly Fiorina? Well, she certainly has reason to be concerned. I mean, let's be honest. The main thing she brings to the uh, to the table is ovaries, right? I, I, I mean, if you look at the Republicans... No, I don't think that's the main thing she running. brings to the table, Ellis. I don't think... I mean... No, it's the, it is the... It is the greatest distinction she brings to the table. Fair point. But I mean, that's what makes her different she is a from woman. these folks. Her she ideology is a woman. isn't. Yeah, her ideology isn't so different. I mean, she does have a business background, but she's a woman, and there are not a lot of those going around at this level of Republican politics. I think that's a fair comment to make. I do. I think what that you're she saying brings is ovaries. That, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, no, I. <laughs> I think it's a fair comment to say, you know, in this long list of contenders, of course, that's going to make her stand out that she's a woman. Well, I think I don't think that and, and you know means what? that she's gonna get you know win it. I just think that that makes her stand out. I think Ellis has a fair point. Here's a here's a distinction, and, and maybe John, this is maybe this is what you're driving at. Um, there is a difference, and if we're being honest, I think we all have to acknowledge it. There is a difference between the way a woman can speak about another woman, right. and the way a guy can speak this is about true. another woman. For instance, if, if 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 I'm debating, and this comes into my life, if I'm debating a woman on television, right? There are some things I need to be mindful of. I don't want to look like I'm a bully. I don't want to look like I'm pounding because because regular folks, and, and I guess we all do this to some extent, react differently when you see a guy seeming to, to, to beat up rhetorically on a woman, whereas there are things that a woman can say to another woman and it's, re it's related to in a different fashion. And Carly Fiorina, if she ended up running against Hillary Clinton, would have that advantage on her side, no doubt about it. Well, what about if we, th if we <laughs> turn things around and Hillary Clinton, I don't know if she would you know, take the bait and start taking on Carly Fiorina, but uh, there's stuff out there that's being reported that could come back to haunt Carly Fiorina. For example, ex-staffers are blasting mm -hmm. her for not getting paid while working yep. under her uh, 2010 California Senate campaign. How long do you think, Ellis, before we see Hillary's camp, at least not directly from her, but some of her surrogates, throwing that back at Fiorina? I know exactly when it'll happen, or if it'll happen. It'll happen if and when Carly becomes a serious competitor here. When she starts winning something, or she starts uh, coming up in the polls, then she becomes a bigger target and more of a fair game, right? Why waste your attacks on Carly when she's still, frankly, pretty far back in the polls? Well, I mean, you, you could think so? She was the most popular in, the though, in Iowa right now. I mean, people were standing yeah, well, in line you know for an the hour said that, that she had the best speech of the night. The other part of that article that, Mon yeah. that uh, Miranda's referencing in the New York Times is that, yes, a lot of people wanted to hear what Carly Fiorina had to say in Iowa, but that did mm -hmm. not necessarily translate yet into any movement for her in the polls. I also think that yeah, no, she, it's, and it's I also want to get your opinion, because we were talking about Dr. Carson the other day, and I think the reason why he has a lot of appeal with voters also has to do with the fact that he's not 
wasn't now, but is now a politician. He doesn't have a background as a politician. And even though Fiorina tried to run, she didn't make it. So this would be really her mm -hmm. first political office. I think that appeals to some people. Don't you agree? It, you're right. If I were running her campaign, I would urge her to emphasize her business background, the fact that she's not a usual suspect politician. Same, uh, same for Ben Carson. I mean, they really are the two people in this race, uh, assuming that we're not really going to take seriously Donald Trump, which I'm not. Um, they're the two people in this race who, who don't have really any traditional political background. And listen, a lot of Americans hate politicians. So if, you, if you're running, make that uh, potential weakness, turn it into a strength. Absolutely correct. All right, we'll talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. Dr. Ben Carson. We come back here on Newsmax now. Alice Hennigan sticking around, coming to us from New York City. We're back with more after this. And welcome back to our roundtable. We're joined once again with columnist and radio television commentator Ellis Hennigan, the man with two personalities. No, just kidding. We'll only bother you for one of your personalities <laughs> today, Ellis. Dr. Just ben one. Carson, uh, he came out on top of the Memorial Day weekend. We looked to the uh, Southern Republican Leadership Conference straw poll. He beat out Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker by five points and Texas Senator Ted Cruz by 10 points. Ellis, uh, there's been some discussion this week about the death of the Iowa straw poll. Uh, you look at these early beauty contests such as this. Do you think this is going to have any impact on the larger 2016 picture? Uh, I don't think, John, that anyone really takes them that seriously. Not, not as predictors of who the next president is going to be, right? Uh, so go, go talk to President Huckabee if you, if you don't believe me. Well, Romney did um, win the same uh, straw so poll last time around in you know, the Southern Republican yeah, Leadership yeah, Conference. No, not exactly his hometown yeah, crowd. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. But you know what? They're fun. I mean, they, 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 they reward they reward organizational effort. They allow people who are frankly not likely to win. Ben Carson is not going to be the next president. I, I hate to break that to you, but he's not going to be. Um, but, you know, so it kind of gives them a little spotlight and gives uh, the campaign some energy. I don't think they're very harmful, but, but again, I would not think that necessarily they're very good predictors about who the next uh, Well, obviously next not if you say he's not going to be our next be. president. Why are you so adamantly opposed to the idea or you personally oppose the idea or you just think no there's no reason I want to I want to know your reasoning behind well, that well I mean my comment was more prediction than uh, than, than commentary okay um, so what I, are you basing it on I, well I the fact that he's never run for office before that he doesn't seem capable of raising huge amounts of money that his uh, support frankly seems kind of thin um, I, you know, I think the black thing actually might help him as much as hurt him. So I, I wouldn't really do it on a, on, on a racial basis. But um, I, I don't know. I just I don't think he's likely to be able to produce the kind of organization that, uh, you know, 10 other people we could name, name will. But hey, you know what? We may be surprised. That's why it's fun, right? Well, let's take a look at where, where things stand, at least right now. Let's pull up the graphic if we have it in concern with who is running mm -hmm. and who's probably running here. You see the four announced candidates. You have Fiorina and Huckabee also uh, there running as yep. well. So we got a total of six people in the race here. Now, uh, when you take a look at this back to the same time, 2012, uh, the, this is what the party looked out, looked like. Eventually, who dropped out of the mm. race here? The main candidates, Paul, uh, Senator, I'm sorry, I should say Congressman Ron yeah, Paul. Congressman Paul, yeah. yeah. Congressman right. Ron Paul. Different Paul Romney, this time, yeah. Paul Ryan, and then the eventual folks who dropped out, Michelle Bachman, Herman Cain, Newt Gingrich, John Hutzman, Thaddeus McCotter, ooh, name blast from the past there, Rick yeah. Perry, and I don't really remember Buddy that. Romer, and Rick Santorum. We got some new candidates probably jumping oh, in this yeah. week. And Jeb Bush is probably going to, you know, obviously since he had that little slip of the tongue, I'm sure he's think, pretty sure it's a done deal he's going to jump in the race. But one thing we wanted to point out when you look yep. at the comparison between the two pools of candidates there is the GOP, Ellis, seems to be happier with their uh, choices this time around. When you look at some of those fresh faces, 57% say they're happy with the 2016 mm -hmm. candidates compared to back in 2011 when they were asked 44% in this same Pew Research Center poll. What do you think this tells us about the field thus far? Could we see another tidal wave of support from the Republican base if they're actually happy about their batch of candidates? Well, yes. I, I mean, it, it's on balance a stronger crowd of candidates than we got last time. I mean, I think that's undeniable. And there, there are half a dozen people in there who are, who are plausible victors. The other thing, though, John, is there are just so many of them. I mean, if you're a Republican, and we're talking now, realistically, 16 people, 18 people maybe by the time we're done. George Pataki, remember him, the former governor of, of New York, is uh, getting ready to announce, I think. I, 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 again, I would put him even, even lower than Ben Carson and his chances of winning. But you know what? If you can't 
can't find somebody in that group as a Republican to like. I, you know, there ought to be somebody you can like. Put do it you, like that. Do you think that will work against them? Because right now, what other than Bernie Sanders? That's that's it for the. It's Hillary Clinton. Hillary that's Clinton. It on the Bernie Sanders. Side. You're going to have. Uh, Martin O'Malley jump in the race here very soon, and possibly Jim yeah. Webb, the former senator from Virginia, who is one of the few people in in mm -hmm. both parties who actually mm -hmm. has some military experience. We talked so much about foreign policy and uh, yeah. security being an issue. I think Jim Webb could be somewhat of a spoiler uh, when he if he is to take on Hillary really? Clinton as well. Yeah. What do you certainly. think? I, but I mean, if, yeah. th th this year yeah. anything can happen. It seems like. Yeah, no, you, you, you're right. And I mean, I, I, I like Jim Webb. I think he's an interesting, he's got some ideas. But here's, here's the really the only problem, I think. In the end, you know what, let a thousand people run. I mean, that's, that's what we do in America. Anyone can be born to be president. We are having some logistical problems. Like, like have you been following this uh, discussion about who should be allowed to be in the debates? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, a, mm -hmm. that's a tough riddle. It, is, it definitely riddle makes things... You don't want to ex difficult. You don't want to look exclusionary when the party already has that kind of problem, right. especially right. if they don't include Carly Fiorina up on that stage to take it back exactly. to where this conversation started. If she's not polling in exactly. the top 10, I don't know how you leave her off the stage and not upset a lot of these female voters that the party is very try is you, trying very hard you, you, to, you, 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 to court. That's the fairest way no, to you're, do it. You're absolutely right, John. It's, no, it, it, it's probably because you really you want to have her there. On the other hand, you don't want to have 47 people up on the stage because you, you, you can't have a debate. I mean, if, if we had 47 people talking now, you know, nobody would get a chance to say very much. <laughs> well, so especially with that's, your double personalities, Alice. We're in, and we're already that's out right. of time. I will, I, will do, right, I will do myself to fill Sybil's 47 personalities. Hey, <laughs> All it's right. fun to be with you guys. Sir. All right, Alice, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us.